overpass, if I'm not mistaken, was the choice of Maus, but I'll just double check on that. Oh, they would 100% like to play overpass. They picked it yesterday, so uh, I wouldn't put it past them. I think if they want to play Mirage, it would favor both teams. If, um, if that were the case, but yeah, they picked uh, mouse. Or sorry, mouse picked over overpass, so no surprise there. Yeah. Bot done. Oh god, bot done. We gotta report this guy for hacking. He was spin botting right there. And well, He's got a hyper beast. Does he actually? Did bot done pick up a hyper beast? Oh, he dropped it for the BTK BDPs. Of course. That's the funny thing with bots. Like I, I've done some online offline stuff with bots on like Crown and stuff just to check out the map. And I'll like throw a bot a gun, I'll be like, oh here, you can have my AK. And then he'll just be like, no, I'm gonna rebuy whatever I was defaulted to buy, and here's my sweet <laughs> tech nine. Like, okay bot, you know nothing. Bots know their place, man. They drop the real people. Plebs. So rude. Absolute plebs. But, yeah, no, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I think Overpass does actually reward the super aggressive defensive. I mean, it, it is an aggro defensive map by default. Yes. So I think it absolutely rewards um, the uh, the new lineup for Mouse Sports. Because if Chris J can get his op rolling toward the bathrooms, they're out at long. And Dennis actually, by default, is already going to be in a support position. Now that you've got two players in a map that favors their style, I think this is definitely a map that, I, yeah, you're right, I'm not surprised at all they picked this, because just thinking about that, in theory, that, that definitely favors their style. No, that's 100% what's interesting about uh, Overpass as a map, is this uh, aggressive defensive, posi these aggressive posi uh, defensive positions that you're talking about, because at A site, you're going to want to push up to bathrooms, and it's really standard to take control of long, push up to bathrooms to have someone support, uh, push down the stairs and get control of that area. Even though you're like way out in the open, not near a bomb site, this is like one map where that's super crucial and not even that difficult to hold um, because spawns allow you to get there without uh, taking any damage. And then the same thing goes on at B. You can push to water um, or you can just hold long B off and cut that whole lane off with your, with your op, cut the map in half and get all that information. And a map that's going to have really um, thorough CT setups with proper support, two or three people knowing exactly what they're watching. You can have these aggressive setups and still be playing perfectly standard and not, not risking the round at all. Well, we'll get the knife going, decide who's going to start out on which side. Germany versus Bulgaria, Mouse Sports with their new lineup against the G-Play team that's been hot as of late. I have to say they've looked quite impressive. This will be a decent matchup regardless. And like I say, G-Play, if they can take down Mouse, they essentially beat half the Penta that was invited to the league. So it would be pretty cool to see. Oh, I mean, yeah. This choke point. They're all going to get trapped inside this. Oh, wow. Wow, okay. They're just going to run back and hide. They're not falling for this. You may say he's a dreamer, but he's not. <laughs> I think that was dinner for schmucks. Where are they? I feel like G play. Oh, he's one away from winning each of these fights. Yeah, he's also one away from dying, and that's what next does. I guess well, I'm a glass half full Christian, guy. Christian, oh, you are the glass half full guy. You're so positive, Launders. <laughs> it's it's adorable. So here we go. We get things rolling right away in Mouse Sports. They get the start on CT. We get to already see this aggressive defense come into play, whereas G play have to do it the hard way on this map. And of course, there are some changes in the map. We've, I mean, it's not that recent, anyone. I think anyone knows now, but Navi, the way they play at VP, the way they play, you don't even have to really get entry kills on A. Just kill that one aggressive player, smoke off the two visible spots from you know the middle of the site essentially truck to bomb box and bomb box over to the bank truck on the left side and you can plant for free and then get post plant so it does favor you a little bit but you have to take out that aggressive player that's the key and right now that aggressive aggressive player is dennis who's already found dreamer so good push up by him next now takes down victor dennis does get caught off in the end by nkl but next responds back into him so one to support the other bubble nice shot on chris j this will open up the pinch onto next so now they're caught out they go back to two on two and they have to rotate over speedy though look at this they don't get, they don't stop this is relentless aggression and this is what penta was known for now it's the mouse team that's going to be the guys on the on the charge and gobby closes off the second player so mouse do get the pistol round and non-stop aggression that all came down at mid that wasn't even anywhere near the bomb sites 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's exactly how you need to view that round. It's, there's a standard push up in the bathrooms. We had the T players come out into the yard knowing that this is what was going to happen most likely. Um, people not typically playing passive in the sites and then taking all these duels and then losing. It, it came close, but we got two frags. But uh, ultimately, the shooting um, was in favor of mouse sports, and that's going to be key. with the Tech-9 bubble, again pushing up toward long. Chris J is the one that has to be so careful as he's already flashed and stuck inside the bathroom and bubble finds him, but it's passive this time from Dennis and this is just a response simply from having out rifles to work with. By the way, bubble went immediately onto an MP9. Can you blame him though? No, not at all. Dennis is gonna find bubble though, so that MP9 won't go any further. Actually, he picked that up, my mistake, he picked that up from Chris J in the bathroom. So he started that with a Tech-9. So that's how we got that free gun. So that's why SMG out, not a huge investment to lose. Rifle plays passive. Dennis gets caught though, but Rifle plays passive so as not to give up weapons. But now they need to be a little careful because Spy Leader does have that bomb on the inside of the boxes. That's the free plant position, but they don't have smokes out to cover the retake and Speedy's gonna make haste of that work and that that mistake rather. Long rotation from Gobby. Speedy finds Dreamer waiting in the corner. Gobby on the flank and KL down, but Victor still alive. Not so well. He's got 14, and that's going to be all he can possibly hope for. And the fuse already in place. Kid out. Actually, no kid out next, the one that's defusing, but kid out on Gobby, so they could have switched that over. They had plenty of time regardless. Yeah, it was a huge victory for G Play, who were able to open up round with an early pick, as you mentioned, killing Chris J in the bathroom. Um, and they did spend a lot of money on that round, but they also got the plant down. They got three players down, did the economic damage, and uh, are very close to keeping mouse boards on the next round safe if they're able to win. And are actually going to come out with a buy right now, which is going to mean a Tech 9 and four Galils. Something you don't really see too often after forcing up on the second round and losing. KL pushing in through the main sewage pipe toward courtyard. Here they come into the site, checking to the left side. There is a player down toward pit. They need to spot him quickly and bubble. Nice response onto speed. He actually almost did some damage onto his teammate, but his teammate was NKL, and now he'll find his kill over the top. Gobby has nowhere to go. Next. He's the only other one that's still in a good position. He goes aggressive on this retake, jumping down, does catch NKL off guard because no one was peeking that window. And now Chris J comes over with the scout. He's going to find Bubble through the edge of the plywood. Brings it back to the advantage for Mouse Sports. They finally have a case in the round. And with Dennis on that M4, he'll get the kill. Now they just have to get on the defuse, but he's not going to be able to do it yet because they are pushing through on it. They still have time, so he doesn't have to hold that more efficient to stay alive. And that's exactly what he does. It looked like it was going to be a very difficult retake. Next came out and got three frags. I mean, that was hugely important for mouse sports, and he made it look simple. Jumping in a pit, taking that aggressive move, um, and trying to get in G Play's face before they got set up and after plant. It ended up working out beautifully. Chris Trey, obviously, getting that kill in the spam box um, on the site was, was huge as well. G Play, once again, did get a kit and are actually going to go with another buy. So after losing a pistol and the last two rounds, are buying on each of them. It's quite surprising. Speedy, good flash to peak monster. Does make good work of Bubble, but Victor was there to slide back out and get the trade. But look at Dennis, the aggression from him. It never stops. He's in behind NKL, Gobby. He's on the front side of the monster, and he's a monster himself picking up two. And that's the first gun. That's pretty uh, impressive stuff right there from Mouse Sports, who, unsurprisingly, this map favors their style. We said that time and time again, and, and so far that's been the exact case. Yeah, so our G play known to, to slow it down on the T side. So we've seen some aggression, and it's usually because they don't have many nades. And you know you don't want to spend too much time just walking around if you don't have many nades to execute, throw fakes and stuff like that. So I wonder if uh, they're going to take another full buy round slowly, or if they're just going to continue to buy light most of the time. Um, they feel pretty comfortable doing so. Nice shot by Dennis, takes down NKL. But there's your response. They overwhelmed Dennis this time. And next was in a position to support, but he wasn't quite close enough. And now that he has the call from his teammate, there was three. He falls back. But look at Speedy. He pops out to support next in turn. So it's one, then two. It's a three-man slide, essentially. And this leaves Dreamer all by himself. Yeah, it's kind of an awkward position. He only got a P250. Bomb's not down, but he does find a pick instantly. Counts to get at least a gun down, but economy is vastly surmounting on this C CT side. Chris J, 10 1, he'll buy back just a little bit, but everyone else pretty high. The only one that's low is actually Speedy, who's been caught off a few times, but overall, this is a huge, huge win right now for them.
Yeah, I mean, you, you can force the buybacks as much as you want, but ultimately, without a without a round on the board, that's not going to matter. I mean, you're only going to want to put them in a position where if you win a round, then maybe they'll have to save, or if you win two, but at this point, mouse boards are really stacking. And we got a forward push at long. Chris J is going to get an op. Who's so close to that player, too? That's the crazy thing with Chris J. He does this time and time again, switches it over to the CZ75, which he's known for using his Tech 9 more aggressively than most people use their AK. In fact, he prefers it to the AK up close, but he doesn't have it on the CT side, so that doesn't bode well. He does get Spy Leader down to 5 HP, and as a result, Speedy comes up, takes Dreamer, and now they're extremely weak on the A side. Spy Leader is the bomb, too, so super low HP player holding the bomb doesn't necessarily bode well. Yeah, we got NKL uh, anchoring the other site here. Over at Water, I might look for some information and try to throw something, but ultimately, they're going to have to group up. The issue is that Spy Leader is so low and doesn't have an op that they're going to have to look for their teammates and make a play. And here's NKL just walking lower B right now. No one is spotting him, so he might have a good opportunity, but oh. Gob spot him at angle him. pass. Yeah, Gob just saw him over the top, so now he's pretty much in a tight bind. He's got two players in pit. Does get the first on Speedy. That was the player I thought that would be more subtle to spot out because he knows Gob's already down there. Gob was the first guy to take the shot, so he should be able to get a read on this. The problem is there's the rotation from Dennis already in window, and Nex has arrived on the scene who very quickly makes work of NKL, has to be set on that peak. But meanwhile, bomb's all gone A, it was a complete fake, and here's the smoke out for Spy Leader. If they can secure this post plant back by bathroom, which is exactly what they're doing, they give themselves a bit of a chance, they just have to watch her flank, but as we could already see from the overla overlay, it's not coming from that direction. This nade, though, that's going to bounce. There's nowhere. Oh, there is somewhere to hide. It's forward, but unfortunately, there's bullets in that direction for Victor. A nice shot by Gob, closing the round off. This will make it six straight. Money bonus firmly in effect now for the T side, and that's going to help because look at that. Just jumps them right up over the mark. They'll be able to buy back into this round, and actually with an ops if they want to. Yeah, I mean, NKL did make that play at B. He got a pick when Cobb B was the one who actually spotted him, so it was surprising to me, too, that he was able to do it. But because he was able to make that play, it gave him the opportunity to plant the bomb. And that's the only reason that we're seeing them buy right now, um, most likely. Actually, they've got quite a bit of extra money, but um, ultimately, uh, that was a really close 3v5. I think if they didn't just give up that second pick to Speedy up the stairs, they would have had a much better chance in the round. Yeah, they give themselves 5 AKs, which actually means they'll be able to buy deeper later. If they overinvest in the op, it does mean that the money bonus is going to actually still be there, but not have the same effect. Either way, though, it's the point in time when you just need to get rounds. And Dennis, again, getting aggressive. They hold this choke point at the stairwell. It's double aggression as well, as we can see, as Nex is also up there, as Chris Jay's in the bathrooms. But the key thing about this is Dreamer, Bubble, Victor, they've started the work down long A, and they've actually gone past Chris Jay. He does fall back to the site just now, but... They need to rotate back over quickly because if Chris is the only one there and he gets caught, remember, you don't even necessarily need entries to get a bomb plant down. If he gets caught, it means the rotations have to be swift. That's Chris. That makes quick work, though. Really quick. And there's the third. He pops back out. He's so aggressive on these quick angles. He's so much better in close, tight combat, in my opinion, than even the long shots. Yeah, nerves of steel for sure. I mean, he was a solo man on the site. Super close to long, ended up getting three frags, three perfect peaks. I mean, he's speaking them as if he had a silencer or something. I had no idea where he was going to come from. Um, and uh, that was the round quickly going the way of most sports. I mean, that was a, that was extremely dominant. Um, we've seen G play make bigger waves in in previous round. That was the only round where most sports were able to keep five alive. I think we need like three, four rounds with G play. I mean, we've seen overpass BT side, and I'm sure you have as well. Oh, 100%. So, it can mm -hmm. definitely work. I mean, executions on B are totally possible. There's a lot of angles you have to check, but again, with smokes, you can get in. Oh, Dreamer. Wow. Good play. Knows they've been aggressive on the stairwell in the past. Catches Dennis this time, because I already highlighted it was a three-man push toward A, and Chris J went long this time just to make sure they couldn't get behind like they did, even though he made up for it in the site. But that was a huge kill from Dreamer. Yeah, this is the first time on this map that G play have opened up with an opening pick. Yeah, that is true. This is actually the entire first time you're dead right. Although Speedy catches Victor this time. And in the sight they go. Dreamer, now they're making good work. They've got full execution on to B. Just have to watch for this rotation, but Bubble's already in position to get the bomb down. And just to go back to finish the point, A's even more T-sided than it used to be. It's still cluttered, but you're dead right. It can be T-sided. So this is uh, G-Play having to make up for lost ground. Chris J coming around from the back. Catches Spy Leader. And NKL's going for a massive rotation as a result of this to try and catch Chris J off without opening up Squeaky and giving his position away. But Terran's already inside the site. He's going to make a quick look toward Dreamer, who's on sandbags. But NKL's still getting in good position. Chris J's going to have no idea this is coming. And if he can get there quick enough, he'll find him before he gets on the defuse. And as next goes for it, NKL does take Chris J down. 
And G play getting around to their name. It's 7 1. It's a little bit late, but resetting the money bonus, they pretty much have to win this next one. Yeah, they've got to. Uh, they've only saved three rebuys, so that means that if they wanted to force up next round and they lost this, it would be on the back of Tech Nines and just armor. Um, but uh, that came down to pretty close retake there. Uh, Chris actually whiffed a molly, and if they had smoked those players off of Cat, if it would have been possibly a different story. But G Play played it well and triple peaked um, all at once. I was uh, I was worried for them though. Chris J and next two players I would definitely want to have in uh, any retake situation. Frag distribution's actually reasonably close. No one's over double digits yet. Speedy's on nine, seven, seven. Next, Dennis, eight, six. So there is a slight lead for Mouse, but the rest of those G play guys are around five kills apiece. So they're not that far behind, which tells you pretty much that the rounds have been close. I mean, aside from the yeah. last cup, the last, uh, the previous round, you know, two rounds ago, I guess is what I'm trying to say. They've had yeah. decent kills in all of them. Yeah, and that's just a testament to how many trades are being won by Mouse boards, including like, all those opening frags. Uh, this time we're going to have more of a focus towards aggressive B. Gob's not going to let someone walk in this time. Um, and this spot can be really powerful. We had them flash him, but uh, he was able to get one last round. And again, they've actually pushed out on B this time, but they haven't gone beyond the bathrooms and into the stairwell. So they don't have a full read on the setup, but they know no one's coming A, so Chris J is already starting to rotate back around in the stairs. In fact, he heads toward heaven at B, which is the right place to be with that op. And Speedy... Actually, he's the one with the op, my mistake, but Chris J is still up above. Speedy's the one with the op, and he makes good work of it from Toxic. One peek at Monster, a second on Sandbags. Nobody checks the angle because no one gets deep enough to do so. NKL, though, good making up for it in Lost Ground. He'll catch off both Dennis and Next rotating through, and again, that aggression's getting a little bit predictable from Mouse, but they've still got a massive lead, and they still have a huge lead in this round itself as NKL now has to run away and save this AK. There are two players that can still buy, so if he saves this, which he is going to do, they're going to be in an okay position because Dreamer actually... Okay, so Dreamer could drop a Galil as well. And Bubble's going to be able to buy out. So they'll, they should be able to force here still. Even yeah, they went be... Resetting that money bonus. Yeah, so I, I imagine they might have to do one force up here. Yes, one dude with the Tech 9. That's not too bad. I mean, Tech 9's very good. But that was kind of a quiet execute at B. I don't know if you felt the same way. It was like, there's three players in the site. Um, there was no smoke down on upper. Uh, when they came out of cat, there was the person standing at headshot that was speedy. He wasn't blind, and he just stood there and took free shots. And it's yeah. like, if they want to do full execute, they've got to, you know, cover the site in confusion. Lay yeah. down those mollies. Yeah, they didn't find any entry kills. They didn't get anything at all when they came in. And you're right, there was no execution on nades. Dennis does catch Dreamer this time, but Chris J and Nex already taken down and out of the round. But then look at the aggression, it still continues. Oh, this could be a huge recovery play. Speedy, Dennis does go down. If he had to hit that shot that much sooner, that would have just been, like, insulting. G-Play finally gets in position to take down the aggressive player in the flank, and then they still die. But look at this bomb. Speedy has it, and what a shot from him. Through the smoke. Vacation, please. Bubble, he did get into the A site, but he has to go back to recover this, and unfortunately, that does give the advantage right now to Speedy. Molotov is well picked up off the corpse. That was an insane play from him. He knew the bomb was down, he was going to get smoked out in the 2v1, they would just run A, and he had to just jump through that smoke and take that shot. And he just man-moded it. That was huge man-mode. I called VAC, of course, that prompts the chat, but that was actually just a really nice play. Good jump to get through the smoke and get the quick peek. Rather quick no-scope. So good uh, JW-style aggressive play with the op. Speedy waits for the angle, swaps to the AK that time, knows he's in close quarters. Smart play all around. Well played. That was beautiful. I mean, you've really just... Kills. You gotta have players like that, you know, that just play off their intuition. It's like, you can play textbook and know that you're smoked out and that, um, oh yeah, you can just play this 2v1 and just pick the site that they're going to. Or you can just dump through right now, make sure they don't get the bomb, put yourself in a great 1v1 if you're able to hit this one insane shot, which you knew you had to do. I mean, who would do that with an up? That was pretty impressive. And again, smart that he switched over. So double up set up this time. Speedy on B. Chris A not playing as aggressive. I love this. He's just like going back and forth, waiting for someone to jump out. Dennis... Catch a spy leader, that's important because that's the bomb. And this time they are forced back to saving because we saw they essentially forced last round. So, super tight economy. Got be on a rotation. But Dennis isn't done. He's going to add his second kill to the round. Very low HP, but he'll still hold off with that M4. Nothing that Dreamer can do. Yeah, tough. Mouseport's holding off that bathroom's um, area with laser beams. So, that's, that's tough to get by. Um, and uh, they've got two ops now, so Dennis and Chris J. Ops are swapping hands. Speedy's like, yeah, I proved myself with the op already. I'm just going to pass it off to you. It's your turn to make a play. And I think Dennis is going to be playing B for him. So 
Um, this is with one of the first mind. times we've seen a, a three-man beast stack at, uh, at B. Oh, Chris J onto the bench, over into the party, makes a massive shot, and Victor runs through, has no idea he's there. This is where Chris shines. It really is. When he can get away with this aggressive stuff, this is when Chris J is at his best. In fact, this is when the, the only Chris J appears, in my opinion. When he plays passive, he doesn't play. So, awesome to see this working on overpass for them. Oh my god, that was beautiful. I mean... No angle is a weird angle, apparently, because that was that was one of the toughest. And again, with the 3k on the round, it's looking for a fourth. It knows exactly where to look. Like HLTV, Broncho, get in here, make a highlight of that one. <laughs> super aggressive to super hot. passive. They had no answer for him. I mean, most words have already put together a beautiful half. G Play could put together four rounds and still not have enough on the new overpass. And it's at this point where they've had one or they've had one round where they got into B and uh, won the after plant, and one round where they got shut down and have had no success at A whatsoever. But they're gonna open it up with a B hit. Yeah, they do get an entry this time. That's a lot better. Speedy gets back, but they trade him, and that's the first time they've gotten the trade onto the headshot position and Gobby now dreamer good job by him all around so now they've got a full chance to work here next has already been spotted on that flank from the player that was lurking back in subway so they'll be able to be aware of his position but they still have chris j to deal with him what a quick scope he walks around slow movement speed not scoped in and still hits that first peak man he is just like jw in a lot of ways and how he plays with that quick quick scoping angle jw is another one that doesn't come around pre-scope next though does get back into one and Chris J dropping to bubble. He'll just hold the spam and make next walk into it. So G play now have two. Yeah, that was really well played by Bubble. Just holding that mouse one. I thought he would get punished for the fact that next didn't want to peek directly into his angle, but he held that 30 bullet spray down um, all the way to the last drop there and uh, made it work. Hit a nice headshot and secured around for G play. And that's two rounds at B though. So the thing is that they don't have um, an option at the other side, and there's only two rounds left in the map. So if Mouse Sports continually stacked B from here on out, all they would have to worry about is the A holds that they're already good at and not anything else. So I like that G-Play here are splitting up the default, not just simply rushing B right off the bat because that's what works, but hopefully we'll work back into it. Speedy knows he's gonna have company potentially pushing out monster backside, so he plays a really conservative flash to just to hold that position. Smarts from him and Chris J catching bubble makes it 12 to two. Last round of the half, they'll force out on the T side, but look at the money they're working with. That's pre-buy for 1450 and 1400. That's, um. I guess you could say dire. Yeah, they're, that's that's a good will money right there. Um, and uh, they yeah they they split up in that default, but then they lost all of those opening picks. I think it would have been in their best interest to go back into a full execute, but to just try to cause a rotate to A or hold people at A or make them play at least a three two, which is you know more more standard. And because mouse sports know they can stack it, uh, they've had so much success. They're changing up everything right now. That boost we haven't seen yet. We've seen constant aggression. They come around. They're already thinking about that stairwell push, and then they have the boost for the first time facing them. And Speedy comes around. He picks up two. But Mouse Sports looking very composed on overpass. This is really cool. And in fact, they have put a lot of work into this map. You said you saw them play yesterday. Bubble's going to get at least one in the round. But this is uh, this is cool because a lot of teams don't put emphasis onto overpass. And now that they have, it gives them a, a really good chance in the in this sort of a depth uh, position at, at, at tournaments where they're, you know, best of threes vetoing system, it forces them to, I mean, even if the, the map doesn't come in, it's a free veto essentially because now they can get another map in that they really enjoy, Dust 2, Mirage, anything along those lines. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, no, most parts just look really, really nuts on CG side overpass yesterday. I mean, again, it was versus public player and most sports can, can bite off teams that are maybe even a little bit better than that, but... At the same time, if you see a scoreline like this, I mean, this is good by any standard. G play, not a pushover team by any means. Speedy already does spot that there is a player in Monster, or at least on the back bomb site side of it. A spy leader is in this boost this time for G play. But bomb is waiting toward bathrooms. They've already scouted out long, realized there's no one pushed up, and still rotate over. I'm not sure why that rotation call mm -hmm. comes in. Look at this push-up, though, from Dreamer. He's going to get caught. Now they definitely can go away. Now they have one player down. I don't think they spotted a boost on A. So that was interesting to fall off it really quickly, but now they don't have a rotation yet in position because there's been no read, and it's a really fast naked entry. They won't call for it fast enough, so Chris J getting a really quick kill with the Tech-9. Now he's going to swap over USP. Stays aggressive. There's actually a really, really awesome position you can use there behind the door that doesn't get checked. And if he had had time to get there, it could have been even more kills for Chris J. Dennis does catch Victor, and going for the knife, he'll get it. That's actually really cool to do. I mean, they've already got a huge lead in this game, but really cool to give him the economy early on. So now if he goes to uh, SMG with that knife, imagine, but 
naturally he goes for an 8k. He definitely needed the money. Um, he could have hit. Uh, that would have been potential. Like, if he goes SMG and gets three kills... Yeah, he could have hit potential 10k on round four. Maybe even round three if he did that right. We're setting records here at Counter Pit League. Um, but, uh, they... Yeah, I mean, as you mentioned, like, they went to stack A based on, like, no information whatsoever. They just were like, okay, let's just let's just risk this stack, like, late into the round. Because we feel like they typically go A, but Mouse Sports were just giving them um, the world tour running through bathrooms down the stairs, out B, and, and Speedy just holding that angle, waiting, um, and making sure that no one pushed B and actually caught someone off guard, got that information, and gave him a sight. 3-3 three, three, though, and they did give up an AK. Chris J, oh, I take it back, it's 4. That overlay always confuses me when someone doesn't have health, but... Chris J is essentially on 3 HP. He's got to be really careful when they go in. They do get the bomb down, smokes off, but Nex is already out of it. Now it's down to 3-3. Three, three. Brought back immediately, though, is Gob. He catches NKL. Chris J is just going to play passive. Wait this out as Reamer comes in, though, and Gobby gets back into it, but Vicar pulls this back to a one-on-one, -on -one, and now it becomes a factor that Chris J only has that 3 HP because he goes for the peak, and G play find themselves an eco with only one AK picked up on the entry. Good wow. work from them this time. Yeah, I'm surprised how well that worked out for them. I mean, was that a full eco? Do we even have armor on Victor? Yeah, we do, actually. So they did spend a little bit of money to try and win here, and, 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 and it, and it only makes okay, sense. So, okay, a bit of a force, but a, a pistol eco, or at least you know, a second round force, I call that an eco. Yeah, yeah. I well, guess naturally. it's not in this situation. Still low on funds, though. And that's what we're trying to imply here. But uh, ultimately, it's going to be really good for them. I mean, it only makes sense, right? You're down 14-3. You're on your last limbs. It's You're not winning rounds with uh, with rifles, so... Um, why does it even matter? It's, instead, they have to focus on their setups and play together um, and hope to just get the favorable trades, and they did that, so um, they're going to have another chance here. Most sports going off with a similar, uh, a similar strategy to their pistol, doing it um, on a counter force buy, which we see all too often these days. Next, pushing forward in bathroom. Keep in mind we go to Inferno next, and Inferno naturally, just by the way the map is designed, doesn't really allow for super aggressive CT play. Sure, you can get banana control that way, but it doesn't let you push out like they love to do on Mouse's side. So that's actually a really good pick from T-Play to bring that into the pool, because Mouse Sports aren't really amazing on it. And hopefully for them, this passive style, it could actually reward. So it's almost like a stark contrast to what we're seeing in this game. And maybe they can you force a third map on it. You think if we saw CT side first for G-Play, they would have had a much better... Much better showing. Um, it's hard to read. Obviously, right now the execution is still coming in from Mouse Sports, and it's coming in quite swift. They'll get this bomb plant down, but we're not gonna have enough time to really see. Unless they make a massive comeback here, unless they can pull this off, then I would say, yeah, it would have made a huge difference. Then it puts a lot more pressure on Mouse Sports. But sometimes, sometimes it, you play differently when you're so down in row. Yeah, exactly, totally. Especially if Mouse Sports is super aggressive, they know there's a risk in that. If they're down, maybe that changes their whole thought process. But they had uh, run of the mill essentially. And G play, good retake this time. They'll get this bomb defusal, so it works out well. Maybe, I mean, sure, maybe if they start, like I say, if they start to build up rounds here, then sure, you could absolutely make that case. Yeah, I mean, they'll have another opportunity to win. I mean, as long as the bomb goes down, Mouse Force, I think, will feel like they're within one of buying all the time. Um, and yeah, supremely confident already. Going with half armor, I mean, they've given up a couple AKs, so I guess that makes sense. Uh, and uh, Chris J with a scout, I mean, I wouldn't put it past him to uh, look for a head here. It's all the same. When you shoot someone in the head with a scout. It's a very cheap op. Cheap op. And cheap it's op. got so much more movement speed. And mechanics with the jump. When you scope and it looks like you're just running faster. Sonic. Crochet with the Sonic hat. Is that actually a Sonic hat? I don't know why I said that, to be honest. I was like, really? I, I'm not recognizing the design. It's like a, a hedgehog. It's got this cool, crazy, spiky line thing going on that in the picture maybe could be Sonic's hair. We'll you see go it? With it? It's a Sonic hat. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. He's got like those speed glasses too, like when you're rollerblading. Aerodynamic. Am I reaching? Yeah. Your eyes. <laughs> you're reaching a bit, but we'll go with it. It's okay. all good. It's Sonic. Chris J now known as Sonic HLTV confirmed. He's probably got like tape on his nibbles too, so they don't chafe when he's speedrunning. Okay, now you're reaching. Alright, I'm reaching now. Chris J, looking for the entry. Using this scout this time. There's a little bit of damage done to Nex, but so far... 
not much can be made of it. It's really passive all the way around. Spy leader's actually taking more damage. Oh, that's unfortunate because Gobby did a little bit of damage to next before he drops, but they do find the entry. Speedy gets one, Gobby gets another. Chris J is going to add now with that scout. Fortunately, they get Speedy waiting and lurking on the B site. NKL now realizes that he was just a lurk player. Low HP for Chris J and Gobby. No head armor for Chris J, but on 13, it wouldn't make a difference anyway. Oh, watch out. They're going to actually come toward Chris J. If he peeks out at the right time, good play. Good read by NKL. So he does check the angle, doesn't get too too crazy going aggressive on this retake, but Dennis finding one, lines up the second, can he get the shot? Not yet. And NKL pops back out with the Tech-9, gets it down to a one-on-one. -on -one. Gobby low HP, this Tech-9 could actually work off, faking for the bomb plant. But Gobby's been heard, he's been found out, but he still manages to get that shot. That's impressive stuff, because as soon as he gave, gave that step up to look at the bomb plant, it was almost an advantage for the Tech-9, and now we're on match point for the Germans. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he played that to the point where G play had no other play but to try and stick that bomb, and he didn't let that happen. So now they're knocking on the door of winning, and uh, I'm not sure if uh, if G play stand a chance now. They're going to be back on an eco. They might thrive in these situations. We have seen them win one so far this match, but the total of four rounds, I'm sure. Mel Sports feel like they can do whatever they want, and an entry into B is going to be really tough. This is not what Dreamer wants them to see. Hello, Tech Nine, or P90 rather. Tech Nine, I'm so used to saying that now. They all have nines in them, they're all easy guns. Victor Dreamer getting kills to at least make this interesting. They've pulled this back a little bit. In fact, they have the man advantage now. Dennis is only on 6 HP, so he has to be even more careful about his positional play. Illumin 90 confirmed. Wow, I like it. <laughs> and there he goes, Dennis. So he has low HP. That does indicate that they've gotten into the site. And look at the surrounding play right now from G play and staring down the sandbags his spy leader spots up the fact that he crosses and the CZ75 makes good use good work and a good kill it's 15 to 5 Dreamer think three people on that round he had a huge huge round in B I mean he was solo man no one was even close on a rotate he got two frags think the third man I mean he did all the damage it was very good from him Mel Sports are actually on a, a Glock save here Lock save. Full save. I mean, there's no re they can give up rounds. It's not a big deal. They don't have to force. All they do then is start to throw away money that allows potential momentum to build for G play, and, and there's no need for that. So good swift execution from G play that time. Auto sniper. Wow, spy leader. They're really going ham right now because they know they have to get back into it. He tossed that. Where did it go? Ah, look at that. Goes to bubble. Mm -hmm. I mean, they. This, that's a good way to maintain a round lead, keep people alive. Like it does so much for your economy when you have an op or auto sniper, because you're less likely to lose that op because of how fast they play, and you're also more likely to get kills, which keeps your teammates alive. And uh, that's gonna be really good for them. But they can have to avoid getting entry, and are doing an okay job of it right now. NK getting jumped on, and Pitto does find two packs for free. That's pretty good. Not bad. Three alive for both teams. Speedy. Um, put the bomb down? Alright, there we go. I guess that, that's weird. I, I think he was trying. I wonder if there's actually a radius on the edge of that railing. You'd think he'd still be in the plant space at that point, but he's not. Apparently not. Regardless, Gobby catching Spy Leader with a passive play inside the water. Maybe you forgot the code, man. Chris J. Hey, he could have he forgot the code. He will find Bubble Victor back into him, but it's down to a two-on-one, and they just have to bait out the defuse. they will spam through the smoke. The smoke's in decent position, and in fact, Speedy's going to get aggressive on the front. Yeah, there it is. He'll push through, and they'll take it 16-6. to six. Very well done by uh, the aggressive T side of Mouse Sports. You could make a case. You could actually make the case. They only got three, two gun rounds, though, on the on the T side. They only got three rounds overall, and there was a bit of a momentum building, but I still think it, I, that, that this is a map that favors Mouse Sports, regardless of what side they start on. Yeah, they they had, they were in complete control the entire time. I mean, there was entries across the board. I think two per team, and uh, that only alludes to I mean, hyper aggressive play that paid off because they got those entries, and then um, slight mistakes. But just overall, there was so many dominant rounds by Mel Sports who were able to keep like five alive, three or four rounds in a row actually. Um, if we look at like round eleven, twelve, um, and even seven, so economically they were never on the back foot. And they just dominated that CT side. I mean, they just look super great. And the other thing was they, they had the pistols to their name, but even still, a 13 to lead can be so hard to come.